the Carolina Panthers grabbed headlines on Thursday when they signed one of the best AAF players in Rashad Ross, and they are now reportedly going back to the recently ended league for offensive line help. According to Aaron Wilson of the Houston Chronicle, the Panthers are expected to sign offensive lineman Brandon Green and Kid O'Brien, who both most recently played for the Birmingham Iron. Green moved to strictly playing tight end in his final year at Alabama in 2016 after spending parts of his earlier season split between offense and defense. He played in all 15 games of his senior season, working along the offensive line and as a blocker on special teams. Green signed with the Chicago Bears in 2017 and was waived at the end of preseason this past year. His play at tight end in college was very limited, as he only recorded two catches in his career. O'Brien has a little more NFL experience. The Ball State product went undrafted in the 2013 NFL Draft, and got a shot with the New York Giants in training camp. After he wasn't offered a contract, he played for the Cleveland Gladiators in the Arena Football League. In 2015, he was signed to the Indianapolis Colts practice squad, but was released the following season during final roster cuts. He had a short stint with the Cleveland Browns as well, but again, was released during roster cutdowns in 2017. As previously mentioned, the amount of AAF players the Panthers plan on signing is now up to three, which makes them one of the most active teams in the NFL in terms of trying out AAF players. On Tuesday, multiple reports surfaced that the AAF, an upstart expansion league that kicked off in February, would be coming to an end. Pro Football Talk reported that the league would be suspending football operations on Tuesday. Darren Rovell also reported that Carolina Hurricanes owner Tom Dundon, who invested $250 million in the AAF, would be losing $70 million of his investment. The AAF team officials have a conference call scheduled with the league offices at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which will likely result in the ceasing of operations. The AAF will come to an unfortunate end a mere two weeks away from the first-ever playoffs in league history. If the players' union is not going to give us young players, we can't be of development league, Dundon said last week in response to rumors that the league was folding. We are looking at our options, one of which is discontinuing the league. According to reports, the NFL players' union was refusing to cooperate with the AAF in regard to using young players from rosters. The AAF needed an influx of promising players in order to become a true developmental league, but the NFLPA reportedly did not want to risk any injuries. Originally viewed as a refreshing product following the NFL season, the AAF saw solid ratings throughout the first eight weeks of the season. The league combined new rule changes that flew in the face of the NFL and fairly recognizable players to provide a product that was intriguing at times.